Formatting for Microsoft Word Accessibility. This demo was done using a MacBook OS X running Yosemite version 10.10.4, and this is using Microsoft Word for Mac um, from 2011 version 14.5.2. This basic demo is for anyone disseminating digital documents in a school, professional, or online workspace for inclusive access. If you start with these guidelines for formatting, you end up being able to easily export the document as a PDF or even upload it to Google Docs and the formatting will be preserved and anyone using any sort of assistive technology such as a screen reader can easily navigate the document um, on the same level as anybody else. So what do I really mean by this? Let's see, what if I'm scrolling down the screen, I were to give you this article and I said, you know, I'd like you to find the paragraph on critical thinking skills and let's let's go read that section um, for our class tonight or, you know, for our meeting in the morning. Well, looking at this document, it looks pretty crazy, right? I mean, there's no line breaks, there's no paragraph indentation, it's just basically a huge gigantic block of text. So how the heck are you going to find this section of the article called critical thinking skills. Well, you know, as I scroll down, it's just wall-to-wall -wall text, and I'm realizing that I basically have to read through the entire thing to finally find what I'm looking for, and I'm scrolling down the document, and it's just ongoing on assault of text here um, with no sort of organization whatsoever, and I'm thinking that, oh, Actually, I actually scrolled just all the way to the end and I couldn't find that section on critical thinking skills. So now I'm scrolling back up and I'm trying to skim through it again. And oh, actually, I think it is right here. I am highlighting um, this text here that says critical thinking. And it looks like this was actually on the bottom of page two. So, you know, this is kind of a pain to scroll through it and it looks terrible. Um, but you ask yourself, you know, okay, when would I actually ever get a document like this, right? Well, for anybody using an assistive technology called a screen reader, what a screen reader does is it allows a, a text on the screen to be read out loud for somebody who's blind or needs that auditory access to a computer. Um, and when using a screen reader, it just literally reads the screen on uh, the text on a computer. Um, however, you know, without any sort of underlying formatting, the screen reader is going to just read the straight text exactly as you see it visually. It would just read it as a huge block. So if you imagine um, the time it you know just took us to scroll through this document and look for what we needed, it's really not efficient and it's totally just an unprofessional way to disseminate a document. So much like I would never ever hand out a document like this to any colleague or to any student and expect them to accept it, um, I also would never give a, an unformatted document um, to any student who's using a screen reader or sharing it with a colleague who's using a screen reader, or I would never even post this publicly um, because who knows what sort of technologies people are using to access um, this sort of information anyways. Um, to me, it's just a sign of being unprofessional and also contributing to this wasteland of inaccessible digital media anyways. Um, and we all know everything's kind of moving towards the cloud and being very digital. Um, so I'd rather make sure that whatever's put out is accessible. So you might be thinking, okay, well, I don't really know anything about this, um, but I just wanted to show you how easily and quickly um, it is to add formatting to this sort of document. So I'm going to switch this over to another, another screen. And hooray, this looks much like an article that you would get, right? So the title is centered, it's bolded. You can quickly see that the article is called Accessibility in Today's Classroom and Other Digital Environments. Um, and then there's some text under it saying who wrote it. It's by me, Yu Ting Su, TVI. And immediately you can see that there are different sections of the article. So like, let's see down here, um, this next big section is bolded and underlined and it says digital and multimedia. And then there's like another like subheader under that section that's bolded and it says print and literacy. 
So visually, we now have a way to quickly go through and the document seems organized. We can jump to like a heading that we see. We can quickly skim through all the headers and subheaders and get a quick sense of the different topics this article talks about and then be able to skip to the section that somebody's referring to, let's say in a meeting or in a classroom. <clears throat> so visually, this looks a lot better, um, but how would this read auditorially for somebody using a screen reader? Well, um, I'm just gonna click into the title here and you'll also notice um, that on this view of Microsoft Word, I have this toolbar up at the top of my screen and especially here, I have my styles toolbar um, that's visible. And you can see there's a couple of different types of styles that are described here. So there's normal, there's no spacing, there's heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four, and et cetera. It goes on. <clears throat> now, before I learned about Microsoft Word accessibility, I would often see this in my Microsoft Word and not really think much about it because I didn't really know what that was used for. Some people out there who might be doing a lot of copy editing maybe, or if you're a high-powered Word user, um, you might use these styles to make your table of contents, um, which I found out was pretty um, cool actually. Um, but I never thought about it for accessibility and I certainly didn't really know how to use it on a day-to-day -day, um, usage. However, um, <clears throat> the styles heading piece is everything about what makes a Microsoft Word document accessible. So I'm just going to click my mouse into the title of the article here and you'll notice that visually we see that it's centered, it's bolded, um, but when I click on it and I have my cursor that's blinking right now in the title, <clears throat> but when I go up to my styles bar, it says normal, okay? And now I'm going to click into where my name is, Yu Ting Su, and it also says normal. And now I'm going to click another paragraph and the styles is still saying that it's normal. So this is all under the hood. It's formatted as normal text. So I'm clicking into the part that I've bolded and underlined and it still says normal. So as long as everything is formatted as normal to a person using a screen reader, it is going to read like this huge gigantic block of text with no organization and no formatting. Okay, so I click back into this terrible unformatted document and immediately you're like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I cannot read this. So let's make this article and this document actually more readable for everybody. So um, I started out by just making it visually more readable. So for us um, CITES, as we can say, um, you know, this works for us, but for somebody who needs that auditory access, this is still pretty terrible. So the easiest way to go about doing this is you can go through and format it however you like, however you want to prettify it, and you know go through, do your center, you can bold it, you can underline it, however you like, okay? So we've done a little bit of that, and it, now I want to show you how to format it for complete accessibility. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to highlight this title, and I like how it's centered and bolded, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to heading one and if I wanted to just click it, that's fine, but you can see it kind of jumped and it immediately um, double spaced it and I don't really want that. So I'm going to click undo and I'm going to undo that because I really want this to be formatted exactly how I did it visually. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this again and I'm going to come up to heading one and I'm going to right click this time. And when I right click, I get an option to update to match selection. So now I'm going to click update to match selection. And I've essentially forced the heading one to be formatted um, the way I want it to look visually. So now I've clicked out of the title. I'm into the first paragraph. I see that my first paragraph is still normal. However, when I click into the title now, I can see that it's now um, formatted as a heading one. So great. Um, Easy as pie, okay? So now we've got our title formatted as a heading one. So now I'm gonna come back down here into my first like section header in my article, right? So remember, um, I mean, if you imagine like your outline organization that everybody learned in school, it's the same idea. So since the title is a heading one, this next header, um, my large section, I'm going to make this a heading level two. Okay, so I'm just going through, I'm highlighting again. 
I'm going to come up here to Heading 2, and I'm going to right-click. I'm going to Update to Match Selection because I want my Heading 2 to look exactly like how I formatted it visually. I click Update to ma Match Selection. And now I can see that when I put my cursor into this big like section header, it's now formatted as a heading level two. Now, this whole section after digital and media, these are little subheaders. So these all fall under the section of digital and media, but they're subheaders because I want to kind of talk more in depth about digital and media. So this would be a heading level three. Okay, so I'm highlighting it. Coming back up to my styles bar, and I'm going to right click on heading three, and I click update to match selection, and now I very quickly made print and literacy my next subheader. Okay, so let's just give it a quick check. Very easy, right? I'm in my title, great heading one, I'm in my next subsection, heading two, and I have a subheader under that subsection, it's heading three, and let's see, where else might I have another subheader? So I've got print and literacy, and oh, it looks like I have images here. So I'm just gonna highlight this. And since I already told Microsoft Word how I want my heading level three to look, I can now just come up here and click heading three, and it's going to automatically make this level of subheader look the same as my other one, okay? So now I've got images, I've got videos here. I'm gonna go ahead and make that a heading level three. And now you can see this starting to come together visually as well as under the hood. It's going to come together auditorially like how you would see a well-organized document, okay? So you can see in this section, um, this section of the article is digital media. And within this section, I've got an area on print and literacy, images, and videos, okay? So that's pretty much it for, you know, formatting those headings and the text and making that text really more organized and um, able to navigate both visually and auditorily. Okay, so what's next? You can see that there's also some pictures in this Word document and also a list here. So let's go through the images first. I'm going to click back into this giant document that's unformatted and it looks terrible. And we would never want to give anybody any document that looks like this. But let's scroll down. What if I was asking you to find the picture um, about critical thinking skills that we mentioned before? Well, you know, I can see here there's some pictures, there's some images in this document, but they all just look like blue squares. And I'm like, wait. Ting, you just told me to find the picture about critical thinking skills and, um, you know, TPAC. What, what is that and where is that? Because every single image on this unformatted document just looks like a blank blue square. Well, okay, let's go back to our more civilized document here. And as you can see, there's actually some images. So visually we see an image of a stack of books here's a movie reel and oh this is my tpac diagram okay well you know visually we see the information but what about auditory access is somebody with auditory access going to get this information about the image well let's find out okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put my cursor on top of the image and i'm going to right click and when i right click i get this pop-up menu of cut copy, paste, change or save picture, arrange, grouping, blah, blah, blah. What I'm looking for is an option called format picture. So I'm going to come down here, click on format picture, and there's a whole bunch of options. This is where people can make their pictures a different color or make shadows, um, you know, put your filters in or crop it or whatever. But I'm interested in the option that says alt text. So I'm going to click on alt text. And this is what a screen reader reads when a person is using auditory access to listen to a document, okay? So because there is nothing in the alt text box, what that screen reader is going to read is nothing. So unless you have something in the alt text where the images are, what your non-visual reader is going to get is blank, okay? So it's gonna be the visual equivalent of getting that blank, unlabeled, square that you saw in that unformatted document. 
So one thing I want to note is you definitely want to keep this title part blank. Um, you don't want to put anything in there because for some reason if you put anything in there then it makes it all not work. Um, so we only want to put the, the description of the image here. Um, so for here it might just be, let's see, how would I describe this? Um, maybe three overlapping circles or how about this actually, let me think that. Three circles that overlap in the center. The circles are labeled T, technology knowledge, P, pedagogical knowledge, and C, content knowledge. The center is highlighted in green. Okay, so now when that person using a screen reader, when their cursor gets to this image, this is the description that they're going to hear, okay? So you might hear this referred to as alt text because that's the feature of, um, that's like the feature that this is called, or you might hear it as image description because this is what we're making. We are making an image description. So after you put that in the box, all you do is you come here, you click OK to save it, and that's it. And it's interesting because the image visually looks exactly the same, but now it is also totally accessible as well, okay? Um, the last thing I wanted to show you about Microsoft Word Accessibility, and this, remember, is just for very basic use, um, is what about those lists? So for anybody who's ever made a list, it's really easy just to hit return, and then you click hyphen, and then you make a space and then you go along and write your list. So that's what is here now in the document. It's just um, you hit enter for a new line, there's a hyphen, and then the text. Well, um, remember, visually, you know, we can see those hyphens and, you know, it, it could pop a little more, but it's okay. But without better formatting under the hood, it's going to look, again, like this crazy document that I showed you in the beginning and you know, oh, here's the little hyphen, but it's like kind of mid paragraph because it has no formatting underneath, okay? So that's still gonna be very hard to find. So what do we do about these lists? Um, luckily, Microsoft Word has list formatting built in. So what I would actually do is I'm gonna come into the document, I'm going to delete this hyphen, my cursor stays at the beginning of where I want my list to begin, and I simply come up here to my paragraph options, and I click the bullet. And when I do that, you can see that Microsoft Word automatically makes this like bulleted list that's indented, visually it's more pleasing, and definitely now a person using a screen reader can go through this formatted list, okay? So the way you continue making your list is you come back down here where that little silly hyphen is, and the easiest way is to actually delete it all the way back up to the next line because when you hit enter, it automatically sets in that next bullet, okay? So now you might be thinking, oh gee, you know, I really don't want that bullet. I'd much rather have numbers. So, you know, easy as just clicking it and you can turn that bullet into a number, okay? Or if we start back over again, we'll come up to our first bullet. We unclick the bullet and we hit the number list instead and we go back and just reformat this as a numbered list. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms of making a formatted list, um, making sure our images have image descriptions or alt tags, um, and you know it's an easy way to now format your document that is visually organized and pleasing and auditorily organized and navigable too. Um, the great thing about this, remember, is that if you start with a well-formatted document in Word, now you can export it as a PDF or upload it to Google Docs, and you've got an accessible document in all those platforms. Um, if you want to do fancier stuff, you know, there's such things as an accessible table and how to do, do those things. So for that, I would re recommend going to the WebAIM website for more detailed information. And you can find that information at www.webwebaim.org. Okay, that's it.